bring up your grade. Okay, liquids and solids, chapter 10. Just have to plug in this. Okay, let's do that again. Liquids and solids, chapter 10. So, first of all, solids, we've got to go back to this, right? This is what I just showed that little fourth grader. Solid particles, very limited motion. All they do is jiggle. They just vibrate. Uh, long range order means they're just continuous, you know, like crystals. Very close packing, as close together as possible. Definite shape and pressure and temperature and volume. They don't squeeze down. So you can't compress them any closer than that because of that strong force. Liquids are like this. They do all kinds of motion, but they're really close together. Uh, short range order, very little bit of space. Remember the volume depends, uh, in, is independent of pressure and temperature. Still can't squeeze it. It's incompressible. Our gases like this, all kinds of motion. There's absolutely no order. Huge space. That's why we had a whole chapter devoted to them because they're chemistry changes. You have to always stipulate pressure and temperature. The shape changes. Think balloon animals. Uh, and they're compressible. Okay, you can squeeze them down. Here's our models, solid, liquids, gas. Okay, intermolecular forces of attractions. You are welcome to call them IMFs, everybody calls them that. Everybody know what this is? It's a gecko. Gecko foot. Okay, so first of all, <laughs> what does it have to do with this? Temperature, uh, we already talked about this. It's uh, average kinetic energy and it's randomly, things moving randomly. Heat's a form of energy and it evolves the transfer. This is directly off that other thermal power point that we had. They're not the same. Remember we did this? We can skip this, right? Good. <laughs> Condensed states, remember this? Uh, oh, sorry, this is when we go from a solid to a liquid. That's called the heat of fusion. Look, it's only six kilojoules per mole. When we go from liquid to gas, that's a big amount of energy, big distance apart, so it's like seven times as much per mole. And then uh, it's just a function of attractive forces. Uh, they're more similar. Uh, solids and liquids are closer together than liquids and gases. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to know? Ah, this is important. A lot of people goof this up. This is melting ice and then boiling water. This, where you take two waters and you break them apart with this much energy, not just a little bit, but 242 kilojoules per mole, per mole will actually do a chemical change. Hydrogen and oxygen gas is called electrolysis. Lysis meaning break apart, electricity, electrolysis. So you're actually breaking apart the two components of water and making hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Here all you're doing is a phase change. It's a physical change. This is a chemical change. Easy to mess that up. Look how much energy it takes, though. Ooh, delta HF, what's that? Heat of formation. Yep, it's a formation reaction in the reverse direction. You're forming molecular water from the elemental forms at standard condition. Okay, let's keep going. Covalent, all right, so I sort of alluded, this, alluded to this with Rade when I said intra. This means within a molecule. So the, the bonds that actually make, remember the rubber bands that make two atoms, two atoms stick together in a molecule. Intra, <coughs> excuse me, inter means between. So like if you're American, you drive on the interstates, go between the states on the interstate highway. It's between states. Intra means within. These are what this chapter is about. Intermolecular forces of attraction. The strongest are ionic attractions. Well, that makes sense. It's, I erased it, Coulomb's law. And then we have hydrogen bonds and polar covalent bonds or IMFs, and finally, little dispersion forces. So, quick review of ionic bonds big old, huge crystal, positive, negative charges. Remember, the anion is bigger than the atom. How come? Less nuclear charge. Less nuclear charge. So fewer number of protons, extra repulsive forces because you have an extra an electron. And the opposite is true for cations. So you see it's just one continuous crystal. The one little part is called a formula unit. It's not a molecule. No one would ever mark you off on that. This is an electrostatic attraction. It's an extremely strong bond. That's why these are so usually solid at room temperature because they just have a real strong electrostatic attraction holding them together. It's just that lattice we were talking about. Um, and we've already talked about this. CO2 has uh, polar bonds, but the molecule itself is nonpolar because they cancel because it's a symmetrical molecule. That's why you need to know how to draw Lewis structures and see whether or not something is symmetrical. So polar covalent bonds are in things like gaseous HCl. This isn't in water. This is not hydrochloric acid. This is the gaseous HCl molecule. 
chlorine is much more electronegative than oxy or hydrogen, so it pulls the electron cloud toward it. So we represent it with you know a slightly positive end, a slightly negative end, and all three of I thought I had all three other words. So we we could say a polar bond or dipole or molecular polarity or polar covalent. Any one of those are fine. Just the, due to electronegativity difference in the atoms. So here's what happens. You get a bunch together. You never have just one. And the slightly negative end is attracted to the slightly positive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and they just all stick together. That's what polar molecules do. So you could call them dipole, dipole attractions. Too many words. Just polar covalent is fine. So on that, the IMF for this is polar covalent. It's a lot weaker than the covalent bond in between. Okay, so this is just two molecules sticking together. So remember the water example I gave you? Melting water took uh, six kilojoules, but separating out the atoms was like 242 kilojoules. That's what I'm talking about here. 242 kilojoules versus only a little bit to pull the molecules away from each other. All good? So ionic is the strongest interaction, and then polar covalent is, an, is another one. Uh, and then if you have, I kind of skipped one here, if you have no dipole at all, so if it's symmetrical or if it's a homonuclear diatomic, horses need oats for clear brown eyes. So if it's, and remember we draw the dipole arrow here and here, if it's symmetrical and they cancel, they're the same, and they cancel, then the whole molecule is nonpolar, but it has polar covalent bonds. CO2 is that classic one. It's our go-to model for that. So if it's nonpolar, it only has a little tiny force of attraction. And that's called London dispersion forces, and you can just call them LDF. Mm -hmm. um, so there it was written that it's a nonpolar molecule with two polar covalent bonds. Can you have LDF with like H2? At all of the homonuclear diatomics? Yeah. Right. And atoms. Atoms have have LDFs. So argon and metals. Metals do mo um, metallic bonding, which we'll talk about on another, another day. Um, but any atom by itself has an LDF. And we'll see in a minute why. So in between polar covalent and LDF, the ones that are nonpolar, in between polar covalent and LDF, there is a special kind of polar covalent bond, and that's called a hydrogen bond. And it happens when hydrogen, which readily gives up its electron, how come? What's holding that one electron in place? One proton. Only one proton. So it's really easy to pull it off. And it gets next to these really electronegative atoms, N, O, and F, NOF. These are very electronegative. This little tiny hydrogen gives up its electron cloud really easily with those, and it forms a, like an embellished polar covalent bond. And it's just called a hydrogen bond. Now, a lot of you are going to want to put OH and call it the hydrogen bond. And that is not, you know, let's make it more exaggerated like this. There's a pretty strong dipole in this direction. Maybe there's something else here, et cetera. So, yeah, maybe this is, what's the name of that molecule? Two carbons? Ethanol. So this is not the hydrogen bond. This is the ability to make hydrogen bonds in water or with other molecules. Because this is such a strong dipole, it's, a, it's a, able to do hydrogen bonding in water or with other molecules like this. It's a real minor point, you guys. I know it bugs certain people in the building. So it's <laughs> that that is not the hydrogen bond, but when hydrogen is next to N, O, and F, it's able to do hydrogen bonding with other molecules. It's a really strong, it's a pretty strong polar covalent molecule. Um, yeah, we have uh, H is so small, it gets right up next to it, and then all of its electron cloud gets drawn off next to N, O, or F. And then uh, this is a better explanation of LDFs. So it's sometimes called instantaneous or induced. Instantaneous means it just lasts a tiny fraction of a second. And it's induced, I'll show you what that means, and it's named after somebody, obviously. And it is a type of van der Waals force. There's a whole bunch of them. We don't have to worry about any of that. LDS is fine. So here's a picture of, let's say, hydrogen. Electron cloud, they're way far apart. High potential energy, they want to get together. Remember, homo um, nuclear diatomics are always H and H. No dipole. 
But as we go this way, okay, for just a fraction of a second, all the electron density, because it's only one electron, all the density happens to be on one side of the molecule of the atom. Well, that means that this is slightly positive. That's what these mean. That means that that disparity induces a dipole in the next one. So here it's slightly negative. Uh, sorry, slightly positive. So it draws the electrons this way of the next one and you get this, so the shading is darker. So you get slightly positive because these just all happen to be on one side for a second, and it induces a dipole in the next one, which is going to induce a dipole in the next one, and we just keep on going. So it's just a short term, tiny, and it's really weak. It's the ones that can break apart the easiest. So you end up with a molecule, maybe, I, um, for example, hydrogen. Well, these are just two atoms. This is a hydrogen molecule with this induced dipole for just a fraction of a second. It's very weak, comes apart really easily. And it's a function of electrons. So if you have more electrons, it means they all could be on one side of the molecule. And then you'd have a whole bunch of electronegativity, uh, sorry, a, a slightly negative charge on one side, leaving the other side even more slightly positive. So let's go back to this page. If there were a bunch of electrons here, this would be even darker and this would be even lighter. So it's a function of electrons. So all you have to do is look at the different molecules. OK, we have to do this demo. Everybody put up your jazzy hands. So there's 20 of us in the room, 20 of you guys. Everybody lean this way. OK, so now this side of the molecule has, there's 20 of you times two electrons. So we have 40 electrons. Oh, we're calcium. Go in this way, OK? And so now we got a really strong dipole over there. And Veronica, you have to put your hands down. She's slightly positive. We were really slightly negative. So that's a pretty strong dipole. Now, everybody put their hands down. And Yash, you put your hands up. Jazzy hands, two electrons. What is that? What has two electrons? Helium. Helium. So he's over there by himself, right? It's like there's hardly any jazzy hands going on. There's hardly any dipole. Where if we're all doing this, we could have a pretty strong momentary instantaneous dipole. So it's proportional to the number of electrons. So back to the gecko feet. Oh, they actually believe that that's what holds geckos to the wall. And if you ever, I mean, no one's ever gotten up close and personal to a, a gecko probably, but they have fingers. And they also have little um, foldings. So what happens there when you get foldings like that, like your alveoli and, yeah, and your um, small intestine, you get greater surface area. So that means, and then they have little hairs on them too. You can't see them here. So that means every single place there's a little tiny van der Waals or LDF, but it's enough to support a gecko. See, look, his feet look round here, but if you zoom in, they're actually fingers. So since they're so light, they can walk up and down the walls and leave poo all over your walls. I don't know if anybody else notices it. Van der Waals? Uh, spider. No, he's just a spider. No, what does he do? Crawls up the walls. Shoots no, he shoots goo out of his wrist. Oh, oh, yes. It's more than van der Waals. <laughs> So you guys, all of these IMFs lead to things like solubility, surface tension, Cohen adhesion, boiling points, melting points, and the meniscus. So yeah, we have the Jesus lizard. There's one word you have to know, and that's viscosity. It means a resistance to flow. If you know what caro syrup or maple syrup looks like, that's more viscous than water. I'd just rather show you surface tension. Here's sodium chloride dissolving in water. One is polar, one's ionic. We never ever say polar sodium chloride or a polar ionic. Don't do that on the AP exam. They'll just go one for the green. <laughs> Don't do that. Here's water. Here's a great big, hmm, that's got to be negative because it's really big. And look, the positive sides of water are hanging on it. So they pull it away. And then the negative sides of water start going after the purple ones, the little cations and break them away. That's how water, de uh, how water dissolves sodium chloride. Babies, they're nonpolar. They don't get dissolved like that. What's all over babies? Oil. Yeah, it's actually called sebum. Yeah, I have a coating of, of nonpolar kind of a waxy stuff. Otherwise, if that happened, no, you're nonpolar. If, if you were polar, you'd go out and it rains. And what would happen? I'm melting. Okay, these are also nonpolar. Whoops. These are also nonpolar. <laughs> so surface tension, 
It's just what happens. Look at these bugs. This is what happens with surface tension. You've got a whole bunch of water molecules. The ones inside are being attracted to each other. It's called cohesion from all directions. The ones on the surface are only getting attracted down and sideways, not from above. Here's a better picture. So it creates an imbalance of forces, and you end up having a resistance, for a resistant force. And stuff that's really light, like bugs, if they spread their mass out, they can stand on water. You probably can't. Don't try that. Co means together, and ad means something, uh, sticking to something. Adhesion and cohesion is happening here. So which force is stronger? Why? It'll, it'll go up the side. And glass is usually negative, so I'm not really sure why the negative end of that's sticking to it. I can't edit that image. There's capillary action. This is the important part. These are uh, analogs uh, going across a period. Look at this. H2O, H2S, H2SE, H2TE. So they're analogous. Except for what? What's changing? They're boiling. Well, yes, but I mean within those molecules. That's correct. It's green down. Electrons. It's the number of electrons. Yeah, here it's F. Whoops, F, C, L, B, R, I. So you're going down the groove, the halogens, you're just getting more and more electrons. And remember our jazzy hands? If you have more jazzy hands, they're holding together a little firmer, a little tighter. That means the boiling point goes up. It takes more energy to pull them apart. You guys, that's all about attractive forces, which is why it's called IMS. Mm -hmm. well, why does it go down and go back? Good question. What happens between H2O and H2S? Oh. Or HF or HN, oh, hydrogen bonding. Oh. So that shows you how how strong a hydrogen bond is compared to a non-hydrogen bond. Here, there's two of them, three of them. Hmm, that's an interesting question. How come ammonia's boiling point is so much lower? It's a gas at room temperature, so much lower than water's, and it has three and H. This one has two and or H O bonds. Hmm, good question. So this, oh, what about methane? Polar, nonpolar. Non it's nonpolar. So like These up. guys are all nonpolar, but look, this is what's going up, group four, just the number of electrons. So that's what's changing here. More electrons, more, hang on a sec. So these, these are analogs of each other. There's that last row, you guys, look, CH, or this is like this last row here. Uh, We're just making more and more electrons over here. So more electrons, tighter bond, higher boiling point. Yeah, more jazzy hands. Okay, you guys, that's it for today.